This week, I'm going to experiment with silver plating. Hey guys, a few weeks back, one of my viewers wrote and asked if I'd seen this stuff. Well, I hadn't. I believe it's created by fellow Brit and avid YouTuber, Robert Murray Smith. And if you haven't seen his channel, I strongly advise you have a look. I've certainly subscribed. Anyway, the product describes itself as a universal electroplating solution. Electroplating is the process of applying a thin coat of metal onto something conductive. And this is typically done as follows. Take a solution, which is typically called an electrolyte, place two conductive materials in this, such as different metals, and connect the metals to a direct current power source, like a battery. An electrical current passes from one metal to the other, travelling through the electrolyte solution. As this happens, atoms from one metal are pulled free and these attach to the other metal, creating a thin coating. The process is theoretically very simple, but it's largely dependent on the electrolyte, the solution being used. When it comes to silver, the electrolyte traditionally used is silver cyanide, and as you can probably guess, it's a very nasty chemical. And whilst there are cyanide-free electrolytes available for silver, these are generally very expensive, so I've always been put off from trying. However, this universal electroplating solution claims to be reasonably safe and it's reasonably priced, so I thought I'd give it a go. A while back I created this bronze coin with this very experiment in mind, though I wasn't happy with the casting. But regardless, I'll clean it up and we'll have a go with it today. I'm just rubbing everything down with IPA to remove any dust or grease. I'll also rub down this scrap silver left over from another project. I'm going to use a 9 volt battery. Well, actually, two, as I want to double the battery life. I normally solder all my wires together, but for a temporary fix like this, twisting the ends together well and wrapping them in electrician's tape is perfectly fine. The negative side of the battery needs to go to the object that's receiving the plating. The positive goes to the donor metal, the silver in this case, and I've already clamped this in place. The chemicals involved might not be cyanide, but wearing gloves, mask and face protection is still a sensible precaution. Now it's just a case of adding the solution which completes the electrical circuit. Then it's a matter of waiting. The bubbles show that something is happening, so I left things running overnight. When I returned the following morning, the coin had turned black which didn't surprise me as silver oxidizes that colour. But I found that this black rubbed away very easily, and for me the process was a complete failure. The silver had also turned black, so again I cleaned this away. Another technique for electroplating involves using a brush or wand. To make a brush, I took a small slice of ordinary sponge. I connected the positive terminal to the silver and wrapped most of this in red electrician's tape. I then attached the sponge to the exposed parts of the silver and bound this in place with a little cotton thread. A piece of kitchen foil acts as a large conductive area for the negative terminal to attach. So in essence, the whole of the foil and anything resting upon it becomes the negative pole of the battery. The sponge is dipped into the electrolyte so that it becomes saturated, making the sponge electrically conductive. This is then gently rubbed on the coin. 
This completes the electrical circuit and allows the atoms to flow. Be careful not to touch the coin with the silver itself, as this will short out the circuit and flatten your battery in seconds. After 5 minutes of light rubbing, I could see an area darkening. Encouraged by this, I switched the battery to a 12 volt DC transformer and got to rubbing some more. After a further 20 minutes, two things became apparent. One, the coin was a little bit darker and two, I was bored out of my tiny mind and I was just losing interest. As I've always said, if you can get someone else to rub it for you, it's much more fun. But in this case, I just had to give up. When I removed the sponge from the silver, I noticed how black it had become. This got me wondering, was this oxidization? And was this oxidization preventing the plating from occurring? I reasoned that perhaps oxidization was always going to occur. So a simple solution might be to increase the surface area of the donor plate. In other words, the silver needed to be much bigger than the coin so that the silver would oxidize slower than the bronze coin would plate. And that meant a little casting. I melted the silver, made a simple open cast mold in green sand and poured. Well, that didn't work. That's better. So I reverted to my first approach again. And when I turned on the power, there were lots of bubbles. Oh, and I should say, I'd also up the voltage to 24 volts. And as things were looking so good, I left everything running for a few hours. Again, the coin was gungy black, as was the silver and pretty much the solution. After a rub with a paper towel, the coin looked promisingly dark. But after a wash with just ordinary soap and water, it was again another failure. However, I was encouraged by the idea of the larger silver terminal. So after cleaning the coin and the silver once more, I decided to make a much larger sponge brush. Again, a good dip in the electrolyte to soak the sponge and a five minute rub on the coin. This time it was much darker, so I just had to keep on rubbing. And after 20 minutes, it was darker still. Not only that, but for me, it was looking quite silver. After a wash in soapy water and a good buffing, here it is. It's not brilliant, but it is silver. It's thin and it's patchy, but believe me, there's a very obvious hint of silver here. Now, I'm not calling this a success, but it's not a failure either. There's some promise here. But remember, this solution isn't aimed at silver plating specifically, so we can't cast aspersions upon it. It might be brilliant with other metals after all. But for silver, well, look at this. This is just one of dozens of similar products now available. They claim to coat with real silver and produce a coating that seems to be as effective as real silver plating. I haven't tried any of them, but reviews look favourable. And it's certainly a cheaper option. So I'm not sold on this product as an easy and worthwhile way of silver plating, though others might be able to get it to work. But maybe off the shelf polish type products would work even better. Anyway, that's the end of this video guys and the end of an experiment. I hope you found it interesting. So take care and thanks for watching.